Recently, I met up with the guitarist from the Dubliners, Eamon Campbell, in his local pub. I asked him about his time in the Dubliners and how he originally got involved with the band. In 86, David O'Brien had a, a huge hit here in Ireland with a song called The Merry Playboy. And it was also huge with the Irish people in England. And the Dubliners were kind of getting to... They hadn't recorded drunk, Seven Drunken Nights, so they hadn't been released. And we had been doing huge gigs in England, Dermot, and their manager was a guy called Phil Solomons, and we had a manager here called George O'Reilly, who was, at the time George was at the bees knees in Ireland. And the Dublin, the man, Phil Solomons approached George about doing a concert tour of England, with Dermot O'Brien, the clubman, and the Dubliners. And uh, th that's how I met, and we became great friends. And I remember during that tour, uh, I can't remember what the, what the L, they were called LPs in those days, but they got me, I played in a few tracks, I won one of the first LPs, you know, so that's, well, now that's 67, so. And uh, then they brought out Seven Drunken Nights, and, you know, everything. Really was, lifted off then. But, uh, but, like, we kept, especially Ronnie himself, a lot of us, and kept in touch all over the years, and Luke, I, I, I used to meet Luke, we drank in the same pubs. Oh, who was it? You know, no, 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 funny enough, no, it was a pub called Sheehan's in Chatham Street, and Neary's, and McDade's, and uh, like I, you know, I'd meet Luke a lot, no, nothing to do with the openers, you know, we yeah. just saw, we, we got on well, and, you know, wouldn't be talking music, you know, but uh, so, you know, we kept in touch all over the years, that's basically uh, 67, Jesus, a long time ago, man. Ah. And when was it actually you officially joined the Dubliners? Well, that, this is a funny story because in 87, it was 20, they were 25 years together, and Ronnie and John came to me in 86 to know would I produce the new albums for them to, uh, to celebrate the 25th year. So I, of course, I was thrilled. And so I had to think about it, and I, you know, I figured they should invite a lot of guests onto it, people that, that they would have influenced, like Christy Moore, Stockton's Wing, The Furies, you know, there was a whole array of people like that. And I had heard through my eldest son, the Pope, yeah. and I'd heard them in Dirty Old Town, and I thought it'd be a great idea if we could get the Pogues and the Dubs together, because to me, like, the Pogues were, like, the Dubs had a reputation in their early days as being hard drinking. Yeah, and, you know, the gargling. And I can tell you a few stories for that, they're six <laughs> seven, but anyway, uh, you know, it was like the next generation of Dubliners. Yeah. Like. So uh, I put it to, I mentioned this, and Ronnie's reaction was, the Pogues, my Jesus. <laughs> so, it, you know, it was quite a, it didn't go down that well. So this was July 86, so I said, to, look, go off and think about it. Uh, we need to start recording this in September. So, like, you know, let me know. Yeah. So they came back to me in, in the end of August and uh, Ronnie, yeah, yeah, look, we'll throw that thing with the Pogues if you can have it. So, as luck would have it, they were managed by a guy called Frank Murray. And Frank, I had worked with Frank uh, on Jesus Christ Superstar, the show, oh, stage yeah. show here. Frank was the backstage manager. And Frank was, I think through marriage, he was related to Noel Pearson. Who was the Dublin's manager, but yeah, used to be, and was the impresario, the Paran, Jesus Christ Superstar, and all those, which are your West Side Story, all them, I did all them. Yeah. We, we, we. So, I mean, I rang Frank, and Frank, Jesus, great, it would be great, you know, that's right. So, we went over to England to this, uh, and I was remember a studio down the East End, down the docks, called Elephant Studios. And we went in, and we did the Irish Rover, and what was it, what was the B side? Jesus, I can't remember now. And, um, I did a rough mix to bring home, and I thought this, to me, this was fucking incredible. Yeah, know. this was it, like. Yeah, yeah. Now, unknown from the announced the Dubliners, there was a record company had set up here called Harmac. They were a subsidiary, subsidiary of a, a big Canadian company. Mm -hmm. And I had got to know a lot of it, Jack McNeese, and I was telling Jack about this project, and Jack said, Jen, we'd love to have it. You know, they were only starting off, they had oodles of money. When I said it with the Pogues, he said, if you can get me the Pogues and the Dubliners, I'll give you, I'll give the Dubliners X amount to yeah. say it. Right. At the time, it was, it was a good uh, uh, advance.
And the poor old dog was drowned.